Hey, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Today is February 19th. It is Tuesday. And uh, for all that had the day off yesterday, I hope you enjoyed your three-day weekend. It was President's Day. Of course, the stock market was closed. Opened back up today. And uh, kind of like it's been doing, very, very tight range. <clears throat> As you can see, the S&P was up about 11 points. Kind of got a lot of that at the end of the day up about three quarters of a percent, but very methodical in the way it keeps grinding higher. The uh, Dow Jones ended up 54 points on the day. Mid caps were strong. Uh, Russell 2000 was the strongest of the bunch, up about 1%. Of course, you had interest rates uh, rising again, and uh, they are now up to 2.02 .02 on the 10-year uh, treasury. And again, they're methodically moving up just like uh, the stock market. So money continues to uh, not pile into stocks. It, it is it is a consistent flow into stocks. So not only are you having money coming out of bonds, it's rotating into stocks. And I don't think this is necessarily the major rotation that you keep hearing about, but certainly money's coming out of bonds and into stocks. People are continuing to worry about that day when interest rates start to rise and they rise for good and what will happen. And so once again, this is a time that you need to check the things that you own, how sensitive they are to interest rates. One of the things that, uh, that we do uh, in our office is we basically uh, do a lot of analysis on stress tests. We run various stress tests to see how did, the, how did our portfolio react. If we had the same portfolio today, for example, uh, when the flash crash came or when the euro goes up or down or whether interest rates go up or down. It really helps us to see how certain things reacted. And then we can make adjustments if we think those things are going to happen again. If we think interest rates are going to rise, we need to position our portfolio in a certain way. <clears throat> and you should be doing the same thing. Now, you might not have all the tools that I have to do those that type of analysis, but uh, you can look back during different time frames, looking at interest rates, for example, when interest rates spiked you know, or when they fell really hard, like in here from, you know, March to uh, August of 2012, when they fell that hard, what things did really well, what things did really poorly. And th this is the time to be doing it. This is the time to be analyzing your portfolio, not when it's when it's happening at that time. It'll be too late. But we did see the Dow Jones rise, the NASDAQ was strong. So again, the market's persistently moving higher. And I still don't, uh, I may be wrong about this, but uh, you know, yes, there is, um, I would say when you look at some of these indicators that we look at to kind of look at how much pessimism and how much optimism or greed or uh, euphoria there is, you know, people are starting to get concerned there's too much complacency, too much euphoria. But again, I think if you ask the average Joe on the street, you know, how much they are positioned in stocks, I guarantee you it's a lot less now than it was in 2008, or let's call it 2007, and, and even in 2000, that that was euphoria. That was, you know, this thing's going to go up to the moon. I don't think people feel that way right now. So to me, there's still a lot of money that can be converted from cash saving CDs, money markets, bonds to the stock market. And that's why you keep getting this persistent move up. Now, I've showed this the other day. You know, I think there's a good likelihood, and it <laughs> doesn't take a genius to figure out that we're on that path to get up to, you know, these, these old highs. And, and that could come literally, uh, what, in the next month or so that we could get to those, those old highs. And then obviously that would be a, a technical place where we would, would pause. If we look at this weekly picture uh, going back, well, I'll even change it to, to quarterly so you can get a little longer snapshot. But you can see, I mean, that would be a logical place that we would pause. And we're very, very close. A lot of people would say, hey, there's a, that's a, a triple top. Uh, in the big, big picture, and we're likely to, to go down. And, and we are likely to go down. Uh, but every time is different. It could be a 10% correction or 20% and then head straight back up again. So it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. What we have to do is monitor really what investors are doing with their money, not what they're saying they're doing, but what they're actually doing. And what they're doing right now is buying more stocks and in a very methodical manner. And the other thing is when the, when the stock market does pause, like it did here for a few days, a couple weeks ago, or even in the last few days, haven't had big bursts up, when it pauses, you're not seeing the sellers come in and really lock in gains and really push it down. 
Uh, you're seeing a little bit of profit taking, but you're not seeing the intense selling that typically leads to a major pullback. Obviously, all the various short-term indicators we watch are very, very stretched. But as we've talked about in the past, sometimes these stretched markets don't go down. They just simply move sideways and let all these indicators kind of reset. Let's everybody kind of, kind of uh, move money around, but it doesn't necessarily go down and give you that opportunity to get in at easy prices. Everybody's looking for a pullback, right? That's what everybody's looking for. Everybody thinks it's coming, and it hasn't happened. <clears throat> and so I would advocate not knowing your situation, not making a recommendation. But what I am doing is continuing to average in for the cash I have. When things run up in a parabolic manner, I am taking profits. I sold a, uh, a REIT today that I had held that had done extremely well. It was a nice income stream, but it went parabolic. I would like to sell it and buy it back at cheaper prices. Is that a risk? Sure, it could keep going up. Uh, and there's a big difference between taking profits and then physically shorting the market. I don't think you want to short the market here. I think what you want to do is maybe take some profits and park some in cash, but to physically bet against the market right now has been a losing trade for, for all of this year so far. And even going back after the election, it's been, a, uh, it's been a losing trade. But as you can see, I mean, the stock market continues to move up. Interest rates continue to move up. Uh, financials, which we've talked about, I continue to own those. I own healthcare. Those things continue to work. Again, not <clears throat> blowing the doors off, but look, 1%, it went up today on a, a pretty slow uh, Tuesday, post-holiday Tuesday. Uh, not bad. Uh, volume was low, but <laughs> it's been low. I mean, look at this. It's been in this low range, range for quite some time. This wasn't anything out of the ordinary uh, today. Kind of the big news on the day was retail. Retail was one of the best sectors uh, of the day. It was actually up about 1.8%. Uh, this is a retail ETF XRT, which a lot of people don't believe should be going up with gas prices going up. How can it keep going up? But you do have some components and they're doing very well. I mean, obviously today was about the merger of Office Depot and Office Max, which I'm thrilled about. It's being talked about, I guess. I'm thrilled because I get confused with the two. You know, they're both red. They both start with Office. They both have the same stuff. They look the same. The prices are the same, I think. I don't know. So I'm kind of glad they're getting together. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the name will be, Office Max Depot Inc. or something, I don't know, .com, something like that. But I think the fact that they would get together uh, is, is necessary. Both those, those stocks had been struggling over the last few years, but uh, Office Max had been running up into this. Of course, had a huge day today, up about 21%. Office Depot was up about 9%, and uh, Staples was up in sympathy also. But uh, essentially, look, you've got you know, mergers are taking place right now. There are, there is a lot of mer uh, mergers and acquisitions going on. Uh, that is typically a good thing. You have, you know, companies like GE and, and transports doing well. So again, this is a very healthy rally. What's happening. Yes, we would need more volume. That would be nice. It's not necessary right now. Obviously, if it was necessary, it wouldn't be happening. So it's not necessary, but we would like to see the market continue to spread out. It's getting a little bit more narrow in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but all in all, this has been a pretty healthy run and very methodical. And I'm not making any major changes right now, other than the fact of when you see opportunities, take advantage of them. One of them that, uh, that we talked about in a blog article last week was uh, McGraw-Hill. McGraw-Hill, the big company, owns S&P. I won't go into all the reasons we bought it, but this was one that, you know, if you go back uh, quite a ways here, you'll see that McGraw-Hill was uh, had been moving up pretty nicely and then they now have this uh, lawsuit coming from the uh, government uh, based on their, their ratings business. And of course, S&P and Moody's got a lot of heat for the stuff they did back in 07, 08. Uh, again, you can read the blog article on carleggers.com. Uh, but essentially, you know, it's, just, it's a matter of saying, look, we're not, not saying this company is uh, uh, innocent of all charges. What we're saying is, the government gives them a mandate how to do things. They do it. They get in trouble. They downgrade the U.S. because of their situ the U.S.'s situation, the debt. Remember, it got downgraded from AAA last year. And so that was, that was right during the Obama campaign, right? And now here we have uh, a lawsuit coming from the government against just McGraw-Hill. Now, remember, this is 20, about 25% of their business is ratings. Moody's didn't get... Uh, hit with a lawsuit yet. 
And that's 100% of their business. So uh, kind of interesting, but a thing, a thing you have to look at again is to say, well, is this a is this a good deal? And this is a company that's been around a very very long time, two and a half percent dividend, uh, very good company. And again, what they were doing, I, I I don't rely on the rating agencies. Really, never have. When I buy bonds, which is where they come into play, <clears throat> I do my own research to buy bonds. I don't rely on what these companies say in their uh, reports. And because again, these companies were getting taken out to lunch. And a lot of influence companies paying them to rate them. Well, of course, the company is going to get rated highly. So the whole thing was messed up, but it was an industry-wide problem. Again, you have to say, are they going to get hit? Is this lawsuit, are they going to pay the whole thing? Are they going to settle? And remember, they have already uh, are already fighting a settlement. There was a settlement talked about, and they're saying, we're not even going to do that. So uh, we think it has merit. We think it's a good deal right here. Uh, actually looking to buy a little more, but... Uh, this is a stock that that bounced right where we wanted it to, and volume spiked. This is kind of a capitulation. I think what's going to happen if you're in this, and I know some of you are. And this is more of an aggressive trade, by the way, because of all the circumstances. Big company, twelve and a half billion dollars, but an aggressive trade. So for those of you that are conservative, uh, may not be something that you want to do. But if you're somebody that wants a little risk in your portfolio, we thought this was a good one, and so wrote a blog article right after we bought it. But basically, you're getting the people that buy these types of uh, patterns, right? They want something that's fallen 20, 25%. They jump on it, it bounces, they use options, the stock, and then they they cut it loose on the first down day and take their money and run. That's probably going to happen. And then when it comes back down, wherever that level is and it settles in, you've got this nice base now, you've got the traders out of the way. And we think it's a good investment and there's no reason why it can't get back up to uh, the $55, $60 level. So it could be a very nice one. So those are the types of things that you can still buy. But again, there's other things that are kind of going parabolic that uh, you know you need to take uh, take profits on. So, But as far as your overall position, you know, navigating around, moving around is okay, but uh, we're not making any major moves one way or the other. You know, the market is stretched. No matter how bad you want to put more money to work, it is stretched in the short term. And no matter how bad you want to short it because you know it's got to fall, it's not doing it. So you kind of got to play the middle right here. And just getting back to you know some of this volume again, this is the SPY. You can see again, uh, for those that complain about volume, it is, it's, it's unbelievable what's really happened. And in fact, if we stretch this out and go back and uh, had this kind of quarterly picture here uh, going back, let me, let me switch it to the, uh, the quarterly, sorry about that. You will see the volume uh, you know, dropping off the last few years. I mean, you can see this happening very, very low. Uh, but again, you know, you have to realize that there's a lot of people who have left the market. And that's part of the thing that's happening right now is this money is starting to come back in. Remember, the same money that left prior to the election is the money that's coming back in right now because we had the election, the market kind of fell a little bit, had the fiscal cliff, market kind of fell a little bit, and then it rallied. No big deal. Sequestration, is that going to come and go? I think investors are, are tired of being burnt by, by being too conservative. And so while you can't ever let your guard down, that's just foolish to do that, uh, I think you do have to take steps to get invested, but yet still have some type of strategy. And all that money now is starting to come back in the market. But when I'm, I'm not seeing the type of complacency that would call for a major top. I'm not seeing a lot of the indicators that call for a major top. It's just not there. Does that mean... We can't have a 10%, even a 15% correction that lasts three to four months. Absolutely, we could. And that's, that's always going to be there. And that's why we do the trading that we do in these shorter term, uh, shorter term fashion. But uh, again, in the very broad picture, the indicators just aren't pointing to a bear market starting anytime soon. And that's, that's good news. But there, you do have to be opportunistic and realize that there are situations that warrant us paying attention to. And then there's other things that I think you kind of, again, put it on... Uh, cruise control a little bit. After the bell, Herbalife is up. This has been a stock that's been all over the map and <laughs> one that I've not wanted to mess with. So we have Herbalife and I think Lazy Boy after the bell are up pretty good. Um, so that, that kind of, I can kind of see that scenario. I can kind of see the person having his, his he's an Herbalife rep, I guess you'd call him. A salesperson comes into the, the living room, person sitting on the Lazy Boy and says, hey, I've got this deal for you. It's a win-win situation. I was told when you hear a win-win situation, you better run. So Herbalife, 
Lazy Boy, kind of a nice combination. Both of those are up after the bell, after reporting better than expected. So, but in this type of company, Herbalife, look, you've got to, you've got to, uh, if you want to trade it, trade it. But it's very hard to invest in a company like that, given given the the, the battle going on between uh, big hedge fund managers. Uh, the other thing that's happening is a company like Rackspace, which is a company here in San Antonio. We wrote an article about this the other day. You know, when you have these companies that are just fantastic, right? They're growing really, really fast. Uh, this particular one has just been been doing great. Almost got up to $85 a share, but it had 100 PE, 100 PE, okay? And now what's happened is the revenue's growing, but the growth rate is slowing. So it's like the company, not intentionally, is taking their foot off the gas, right? They're not growing as fast. And remember, when you pay for 100 years worth of earnings, Remember, that's what you're doing when you buy the stock. You're, you're buying the stock for 80. You're only buying 80 cents worth of earnings. And so if it comes in a little less than what you thought, you're going to sell the stock. And that's what happened the other day. It got hammered and it continues to fall. And it may be getting to some support. But even here, it's not going to be a cheap stock. Uh, I've been asked about DDD, 3D Systems. This is kind of a hot area, 3D software company, computer software and services. Again, another company that is growing very, very fast, and it's okay to invest in those companies. But just realize you're going to have to determine when is that growth slowing, because as soon as people pick up on the fact that it's slowing just incrementally, the stock goes down a lot. And this is another case with very expensive stock, very fast growing. You have to determine, are you in the fifth inning or are you in the ninth inning of these? And, and I'll go back and I... I've used this example many times, but Starbucks was a perfect example. Obviously, not even a tech company, but Starbucks was a company back in, you know, 06, 07. And when the growth slowed down, the stock kept going down, 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 down. Finally, it became a good deal. It was as cheap, and so then it turned around, and now it's it's uh, going back up. And it's you know, is, is it cheap? I wouldn't say it's cheap today, but the point of the story is that when you're investing in growth. As soon as growth slows, the company gets hit. You're seeing it, and by the way, you're seeing it with companies like Apple, who's slowing a little bit. N not even that Apple was expensive. So imagine a company that's got a 15 PE falling like Apple has. Imagine going out to some, something like a, a rack space or a uh, you know 3D systems. Those companies are going to fall very, very quickly. And so be careful when you're buying those high go-go stocks, these kind of IBD type stocks that are kind of the cult stocks. They're fun to invest in. If you can catch them in the second or third inning, it's hard to catch them in the first, but if you catch them in the second or third inning and ride them to the seventh inning, that's your sweet spot. And those are fun, and, and we'll continue to try to point some of those out. But uh, a lot of these have gotten hit really hard lately. And uh, and then you have to just determine, is is that the end? You know, is that the end for these companies? Uh, as, far as, their, as far as their really fast growth. And when they get in that transition, then they just become a, a regular old value company and then eventually they become a huge behemoth value company, kind of like a, a Coca-Cola or an Exxon. You know, those companies can't grow at 40% a year like they used to. But it's a good lesson because I think there's a place for both types of companies and portfolios. That's not to say you always buy value companies. You don't always do that. Some of the best profits are the, the early growth companies. But just realize, just like surfing, you're going to have to jump off at, uh, at some point. So, all right. Thank you for joining me. Hey, don't forget CarlEggers.com, EggersCapital.com, the money management website on there. Uh, we also have uh, Twitter.com throughout the day, slash Carl Eggers, uh, Google Plus. We're on iTunes. We're on Facebook. And if you have any questions, you want some stock symbols, uh, just shoot them to me and we'll cover them in a podcast. So keep the questions coming. Appreciate it. And uh, for all you new people to the podcast, welcome aboard. I know there's a lot of you have uh, been signing up lately. So thank you for that. And we will talk to you soon.